Hello and welcome back, I'm Bebo Joe and this is Railroads Online. I played around a little bit, I am here on the map, on this little thingy, and trying to get from the sawmill to the iron ore mine in a eh, maybe unconventional way I saw it and I thought it was interesting, but along the way I made this monstrosity. You see that just, just walled siding here, over here, going, going all over there? Yeah, I don't like it. It's getting up to the sawmill, uh, sorry, to the iron ore mine, and I took the Eureka up there, but also the Eureka can only take four loaded wagons up there. That's not, that's not cool. I understand the Eureka is not the best locomotive out there, but I do want a little more. And I think we can help this by just building something a little gentler sloped. And for that, I started building a helix. It's not good enough yet, but I want to make a really good helix up here. And I think this may help some of you uh, figure out how to build helixes. So that's what we're going to do today. So I built this um, monstrosity of a, of a rail bridge already once, and I will tell you, I thought it was fine, and then I saw that big gap that's just in front of the mountain there. Don't like it, not a fan. And I started taking it down, taking off all the, the rail connections here, and it just didn't feel right. And then I wanted to delete the whole bridge, and I decided, or I realized, that's a really stupid idea. Why is that a stupid idea? Well, because if I have this bridge, I can use it as a better, well, call it a viewpoint to see where I should place the next bridge that we actually want to use. So instead of getting rid of all of the bridge, I'm just going to get rid of most of the, the rail connections that we have, because what I really want is to just use this bridge for the initial helix. Um, and it's not going to be a super tall bridge. Right now, this bridge is set at 2 degrees or 2% incline. That's, that's what it is. And it will totally work. It's also set at 20 degree uh, curvature, which is, seems, seems to be more than, more than adequate. And yeah, I, I want to improve on that. I would like to get the curvature a little nicer because with the new update, curves do matter and actually increase your, call it friction if you want to, uh, increase your friction and, um, well, oh, come on, let me, oh, this is just set on rails. Please hold. It's, um, well, the friction will matter for your gameplay um, because it will slow down your locomotives. And I'm already really close to to the max with the Eureka, and I would like to use the Eureka for this run, and I would like to use other locomotives for this run as well, at least for eight cars. <laughs> that's that's my overall overarching goal, and I hope we can get there. I plugged it into the uh, Google Sheet calculator that you can find on the Discord. I can try to leave a link in the description if you want, but please just join the Discord. They, they do a lot of great stuff on there, so um, I don't want to take too much of their thunder. But yeah, I, I plugged it in there, and it told me at 2 degrees, I can pull 4 wagons. Barely. Barely, barely. <laughs> The initial ramp over there is at 3 degrees, or 3%, sorry, I'm using degrees for some reason. It's 3%, doesn't look like a lot, but it's not, it's barely getting 4 up there, just barely. The calculator actually says it's about 6% overweight, but maybe I took enough pieces of wood off of the tender that it can actually get up there, I don't know, it doesn't matter that much. But at 2 degrees, uh, it tells me I'm about 6% over with 8 fully loaded wagons of... Um, what is it, four beams and four lumber are loaded at the same time, which are not the same weight. So it's really close, but it still tells me I can't do it. So I would really, really like to run um, this helix, still at about 20 degrees, but using a one and three quarter percent grade. So yeah, that's what I wanna do. Also, I'm using the steel trestle uh, bridge. I mean, you know what to find is just steel trestle right here. I'm using that because the splines that it produces have a thicker spline in a spot right here. Looks like this. Usually it's a double split, like a double connection. And then there's a quad connection right here. These splines are about the same length when you place them as the spine or the, uh, the rail that you can connect, the rail pieces that you can build. So it is really, really easy to follow the curvature of this uh, bridge or the bridge that is like this. So that's what I wanna, that's what I wanna try. And yeah, just just try it out. I, I'm i going to leave this bridge here for right now, and we're just going to see how this works. As I said before, I would like to use 
the bridge that we already have as our well helping pillar, helping hand, so I can actually see where I'm going. Because the problem that I had before was simply I I could not see where the top of the of the bridge was, and that's why we're really far away from from the side of the mountain. I would like to get rid of this um, this bridge at some point and just use the um, more adequate looking. What are they called? <laughs> Uh, the 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 groundwork yeah the groundwork with wall that's that's what I want to use on the on the side of the mountain if appropriate because it looks prettier I don't want to just have a bridge all the time also we need to take off some bridge pieces in the middle here because there will be a piece where we cross which is somewhere in this area I hope and we'll just have to address that too once we get there but for right now gradient one point seven five percent because we, you can change that this is a constant gradient effectively but I also want to um, change our curve radius already at the beginning to well 20 degrees got us really close i think um no i do like 20 degrees but just a little different because i have a slightly different starting point than than i did before but here's what you can do these uh the bridge excuse me not really playing ball but the bridge will let you build the, the long pieces, the long spines that I talked about to a certain point, and if you just use those, it will make your life really easy for uh, placing your rail later on. And having having this extra extra piece of bridge that I already have connected is actually making my life a lot easier compared to what I had to do beforehand. So yeah, highly recommended, very very highly. Yeah, so we're just gonna go around here, do this one and three quarter degree percent incline. And hope that I end up somewhere that is not pointing right into the mountain, which I mean just looking at where our current degree or our cur our original bridge is already sitting, feels like we're doing okay. Feels like we're actually gonna turn into a little earlier. And again, these this turn was already this bridge, the current helix was set at 20 um 20 degree curve radi uh, radius. It should be fine. I think we're gonna get there. But yeah, I, I was sitting here for a long time just trying to figure out what is what can I do here? Because I really hated that groundwork that we have behind me because it's just there's so much of it and got so tall and so ugly and I was not happy with it. So I just figured, yeah, Helix, that is that is definitely the right way to go. I, I am messing with the with the angle here a little bit because we are getting close to um the mountain and that's kind of where we want to be now you don't want to just slap into the mountain right away you want to be able to adjust it just a little bit and again with the way the bridges are set up it is relatively relatively not super easy to um well to adjust and i'm trying i'm going to try to stay on top of this bridge now just to see if i can um Get an idea of where on the mountain we are without clipping into the mountain and honestly i will i will use the bridge for right now just until the end why because i would really like it if i uh, can adjust the, the 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 incline as much as i have to at the very end uh, ideally i don't want to adjust the incline at all because where it is right now seems to be pretty appropriate for the height of where we're going to put this bridge on the mountain on the face of the mountain at least and i, I want it to look good that's that's the whole point of changing this so in the end i need this to look good and if we have to increase the height of this bridge again or the incline of this bridge again i think we're just going to make it worse so i don't want to do that because the, the higher we put it you know i'll just show you what i'm talking about because you probably you probably know what i'm talking about or you don't but if you increase the bridge height you're now higher and that's great we're at three percent or 2.75%, but you're also really far away from the mountain again. And I want to get close to the mountain. And if we can build it out with the bridge as we have it right now, let's go back to 20 degrees, I think. Um, the way we have it right now, 18 should be fine. Then um, we could put some regular groundwork with wall right on top of the bridge, and that will look nice. Also, we will have bridge pillars already in here that we can use as they are. Um, so we don't have to replace the bridges later on or replace groundwork with bridges later on and I am all for that Like this piece right here. That's good. That's going in right now. That's definitely going to be a piece of bridge 
Uh, no question about that. And then, yeah, get back to nice and close to the mountainside. It is pointing at that mountain a little bit, and I wish I could see a little more where we're actually heading. But it is the way it is, and there we go. I th This is already a lot better than what it was before. This is exactly why I'm doing this, and it's exactly why I left the bridge where it is. Um, see how far we can go. This is a... Yeah, that's what I thought. Let's just hug the mountain as much as we can. I, I do need to continue the curve, but doing it this way really, really, really allows me to see exactly where we're going. And now we're pretty close. I still would like to hug the mountain a little more. I really don't want to increase um, 20 degrees, should be fine. And now, ah, uh, no, Oof, that was close. Yeah, there we go. 20 degrees should be fine. I don't have the luxury of actually seeing what's on top of it anymore, but... Huh. So the thing that I see right now is if I do it at... at this degree level that I have, I'm a little higher. Eh, 1.75% may actually get us there. I will just call this one good. I think we're in a really good place. Can I get up here? Yeah, I think we're in a really good place overall to um, get a train at least up to here. I still have to connect the whole thing up to the iron ore mine, and that is fine. But as long as we're not clipping into the mountain anywhere, we should be able to get pretty good, um, pretty good rail laid out here. This is a piece that we can probably improve a little bit if we really wanted to, but we really don't have to. I just have to make sure that we don't have any trees on here. That's that's as usually a first thing that you have to that you have to cover and uncover. And once I'm done with that, I will be back and uh, show you what I mean, or how you need to place the pieces of rail like, over there, just to make it pretty. I I had a lot of problems with that, so I hope that you will appreciate that too. Cool, see you soon. I made it all the way to the beginning, and there is our trestle that we have to run through. Is our train even going to fit through there? That is a legitimate question. And honestly, I'm not terribly worried about it, because if the train doesn't fit underneath it, which, eh. Right now, everything is about, well, 1.75% to go up here. If I have to increase that to a little steeper, just from maybe this stop right here, I need my X back, from right here, I don't think that's the end of the world. And also, once we have the rail laid out, I will probably try to remove some of these guys. It uh, should look a little... Pr well, I have to remove them because there are collisions on these on, on these pieces. Uh, but yeah, I, I think I want to lay the, the actual track first to make sure that this is this is all functional. And then replace it with little pieces. I heard that if you put out really short pieces of this trestle bridge, it doesn't get the pillars. And as you can see right now, every other piece is already without the, the pillars. So we'll, we'll, we'll see how it works. I haven't tried it out yet, but that is the next piece. Now, off to actually laying the deck. Start in the middle of your thing. You don't have to make this perfect because everything will kind of, kind of line up. Um, maybe, uh, maybe play and start like laying really close to the edge because you want to line up with these pieces right here with your arrow. And that's all you want. Then press the right, no, sorry, left alt key uh, just to get the unsnapping done. And then you just start placing them right on the middle of these double pieces. If you place them a little shorter, well, place them a little shorter, it's fine. I think the first pieces I made just a little bit tighter together as they, than they need it, and then you can just start going on. And this means that you use the curving tool from before, sorry, there's another short piece, curving tool from before when you laid this bridge work in, and everything should be a relatively, not perfectly, but relatively smooth curve that makes your life a lot easier um, for getting all your trains up here. And we're only doing 20 degrees or 20%, 20 degrees, 20, 20 degree curvature. Yes, I'm pretty sure I said it right this time. So it should be fine for pretty much every train that we can run. I know I've done a lot sharper turns before um, on my railroad career, and this, this should be no different. But yeah, just continue this. Place it on the thicker spines, place your, uh, place your arrow on the thicker spines when you place this. These are not perfectly max length pieces, and you can do a little better at that than, uh, than I did, but these will get us there. These will get us there, and this is all continuous track, which means it will be pretty smooth. Like, the game, 
is pretty forgiving for freehand laying track. You can try to do this and line them up perfectly with 20 degree, 20 degree track pieces. I'm not that person. I can't, I, I won't even try. I won't even, I won't even pretend that I want to do that because that sounds terrible to me. This freehand stuff just does just fine. And if I turn around later, you will see that this, the curvature that we have achieved everywhere is more than sufficient and more than adequate for everything that this game wants you to do. So highly recommend it. Here, this is a piece that feels a little bit like it could um, use some straightening and that's fine because if you put a couple straight pieces of spine and there are a couple straight pieces of rail, it's actually a lot easier later on to get your, um, like to connect pieces again. If you, if you miss something, if you have to um, restart or at some point, the game will not allow you to continue going with your, with your spine anymore. You have to do something else. And it's really easy to do to do that, to switch out some pieces of rail on straight pieces. It's it's also totally doable on the uh, curved parts, but I find that rail always looks a lot uh, more cranky. Yeah, that's the word. <laughs> rail looks a lot more cranky if you do it that way. So give yourself, every once in a while when you can, just straight pieces and use the left alt for that. Otherwise, um, freehand is just fine. I am trying to stay somewhat in the middle of this bridge whenever I can. Not always perfectly possible. And as you can see, I'm a little off the spine curvature right now, but we made it. We made it to the point where I want it to be right here. And um, I'll probably delete some of this later on, but that's, that's all the rail I wanted to lay. Now let's see how this track looks. Is it gonna be perfect track? No, absolutely not. That's not how I play this game. And that's the first lesson that I needed to learn that if you play this game to lay perfect track all the time, you're going to have a bad time, be frustrated all the time, and just uh, just won't be happy with it. That's how I played the first time, and I hated the game. I hated the game the first time. I played for a good hour and a half, and I said, nope, not not, not even going to bother anymore. That's not, not, that's not how I want to play. I would like to get that, spot, that, that rail off of there, but it won't let me. I may have to... May have to do it off a train later, unless, yeah, I said to demolish everything. May have to do it from the bottom of some, for some other things. Uh, I'll get rid of it eventually, but for right now I'm at the wrong height for it. So I can't really uh, do any of that. Give me the demolish, because I do want to get rid of as much as I can. Um, can't just leave this sitting there. But look at the, the track. Are there some kings in it? Oh, definitely. Absolutely. I've never built track without kings in it. But this is more than capable for exactly what I need. And that's probably what you should care about too. Um, yeah, I will, well, we've seen everything now. I think all the, all the trees that anyone would care about are now taken care of. The only thing that's left, oh, you're not gonna let me, let me any, remove any of that. The only thing that's left is I have to um, build a gap here. I don't know how big the gap has to be, so let's jump down here. It's gonna take me a while to get back up there when I have to, but I'm pretty sure just looking at this that I have to remove a little bit of the spine, a little bit of that one. There we go. A little bit of this guy. There we are. Uh, just gotta remove a little bit of this so I can actually get through this, through the section without um, hitting my head or the top of the locomotive, if you know what I mean. So let's use, let's use this guy, a little bit of guardrail. Um, not curve, no. I, I don't know why I have problems with the with the buttons today, but just two degrees. You don't so my, my goal is to get less than two degrees pretty much everywhere. That does not mean that you can't go a little higher every once in a while, because as long as your train has a little bit of momentum already going, um it will be fine going going where you need it to. So let's just do two and a quarter right here because I do need you. I do need you to come down to the correct level pretty soon because our locomotive is actually waiting over on the left. Oh, it's waiting there unless it crashed and uh, we have to connect to it. That's the wrong button entirely. I tried to hit left, left alt again. I don't really like that the game does not always let you see where you are, but if that is straight, then I think I'm fine with putting this here for now. Yeah, that's good. Uh, and then just keep going down here until we hit something usable and I think we are really really close to to where we want to be now this is two and a quarter percent right here and I think 
we can do a tiny bit more just for a little while and uh, call it good. Just, uh, I like to do constant rate usually, usually because it makes life a lot easier when you run with that um, because the, the uh, percentage changes are not as severe, but this is a perfect example of using variable stone grade. So we, we stay below two degrees for most of the time, and then every once in a while we just increase it to a little more than that. Let's go curve radius again. I don't know why I'm hitting the wrong ones. Let's start with three degrees right here, and then uh, see where that takes us. Three degrees again. You should be able to get a little bit of momentum going up this, um, this bridge, because I think the bridge is only really 1%. So we have a little bit of wiggle room. And now all I wanna do is connect this good enough. Good enough is what I'm going for here. And I think we have more than achieved that. Now let's get rid of all the stuff that we don't actually need. And then here's the thing that I learned. Do not just rip the, um, rip the rails out underneath your locomotive because when you do that, you're, you're gonna end up in a hurt. We still have some steam in here. I don't know when I wrote it or when I drove it the last time, but that looks good. The brakes on this guy are also amazing, so um, you can just take care of that. Get me some demolish tool to get rid of the rest of the rail that we don't need anymore. Would like to not delete the thing that I just built. Beautiful. Look at me. I, I will clean this up better um, later on. But I think this piece will actually connect us to... Um, to the bridge that we just built. And as you can see, I could have done a little better job and I will do a little better job. So give me constant stone wall, connect straight to this guy, right in the middle, just right, right there. And I will try my best impression of making this a straight connection. 2%, sure. Why straight? It will look a little better, a little sharper. Doesn't, again, not, not perfect, just, just good enough. And this I'm actually fine with. Now I can say, get rid of all this, get rid of that guy, get rid of a couple trees so we can actually see something. I don't like removing all the trees. I'm not a, I'm not a tree hugger or anything like that. I do enjoy nature a lot, but in this game, I do think the, the trees add a lot of character. So I only want to remove them where it's necessary. I do understand that at some point, uh, when the railroad came along, they just used all of the trees to make the sleepers, and that's why there's not a lot of trees around. But just in this game, I enjoy a nice tree cover. I just, I just do. Okay, uh, three degrees just for the start here, and then we are just going to uh, try to match up with that guy. And we're just going to honestly stay for three degrees. It's not really necessary, but it's, it's just the way to go. Just the way to go. Come on, let me let me get on there. Thank you. Just a little longer, and you are actually connecting to this. That is perfect. Demolish this piece because it just looks ugly. Demolish that piece. Make sure everything is connected to something, and I think we have a winner. This guy can definitely connect straight to what's coming right after. I will throw one of these guys in. You look like a cricket a little bit, honestly. Huh. <laughs> Um, I don't trust that. I really, I, let me, there we go. That looked a little cricket, like it's not, it, it didn't look like it was aligned well. So I'm just going to do that just with the normal rail, try to be as straight as I can. Hit the left uh, alt button so I have a straight connection. I do know the bridge is straight and the rail on the bridge is very straight. So I wanted to keep that. As you can see, we are getting a little bit away from the straightness. That is fine, that is natural. When you do lay freehand track, especially on the sharper turns, make sure that you go to almost max length of your, of your rail line. That way your turn should be nice and smooth and give yourself enough of a swing to connect two things. Now this one is the critical piece, obviously. I think this turn is a little too sharp. But let's see. No, actually, this one is fine. I have no idea if it's going to fit here. <laughs> I, I have no, no idea and no way to find it out. Um, yes, that, that piece is also in the way, so you have to go. Yes, so how good am I? I, I don't know. 
And if I have to, I will leave this exactly where it is right now. And if I if I don't have to, then that's fine too. But here's what you would have to do at this point. You have to essentially lay track. Um, I guess it did lay a little bit of track there. This is where it wants to put a pillar. Let's take it back a little bit. It doesn't want to put a pillar there, but it won't let me place a piece of rail there. So I think what they said, and uh, this is pretty easy to test, is you can only use this to lay initial track. So maybe there. Um, that's really, really, really ugly, isn't it? You know what? I, I don't know if I'm going to bother with this right now because it feels like it's going to cause a lot of frustration and this is a curve. What I really have to do is build a bridge right next to it and then build something that's really close to it and then um, just overrun that again. But now is the time to figure out what we just did, if what we just did is actually functional. Um, and as usual, there's only one way to find out in a train simulation game, uh, drive the train. I do want to make sure that the rail over here is not interfering with uh, with the bridge. So let's just take out what we don't need. That looks good. This one looks like it shouldn't interfere, but if it does, I don't want it to. Also gives me a chance to clean this up a little bit. Just, there you go. A little more, a little more, a little more. Uh, yeah, no, the game doesn't like that I'm doing that. That's fine. I should have probably put some logs in the in the firebox for for the engine, but I completely forgot about that. So let's test what we just did. I made a helix. Who put this piece here? <laughs> Can't leave that. That's just wrong. Yeah, let's see how we did. Yes, those pieces over there are definitely floating, but I'll see if I can fix it. I, I would like to fix it, make it look pretty. If I can't, I can't, and then I don't worry about it. But for right now, as long as my train fits underneath there, we have done exactly what I needed to do. Let's get the train, put some fire in, and then head up this bridge. Isn't this pretty? It's a nice long bridge. Is this a realistic bridge? I don't know. I don't want to go there. Um, but it's not floating. It's standing on some pillars. <laughs> Does that count for anything? Maybe. But no, I like it. Are you still rolling backwards? I thought I put the brakes on 100%. Stop! <laughs> Stop! Wait for me! Come on, train. Okay, I'll catch Doris, and then we'll head up that uh, that helix and see if it actually works, because that's what it's all about. Well, here's the thing. While I was fueling up Doris, the Eureka, I felt that it would be really stupid to try to try out the helix with just some wagons without having the wagons loaded with everything that you actually want to have on there when you try it. So here we are, fully loaded, eight of the state cars ready to go. And I can show you uh, what it looks like how, well, on the way there, because there, it's just like a one minute trip. It doesn't take very long. It took a long time to build. And honestly, I think it's quite scenery. So yeah, let's get, let's get Doris moving. Thanks Doris, you're doing great. There's a screenshot moment right there. <laughs> it's nice and bright. This is always nice for getting a screenshot on there, even though this is a Helix episode, but at some point I may use it for something else. But there we go. We have the sharpest turn, the sharpest curve coming up right here between these two switches. At some point I may, actually right behind the switch, it's never a really sharp turn. Maybe I'll fix it at some point. So far, everything seems to work just fine. See, there, no problem. <laughs> Just a little dancing of Doris, but nothing um, nothing derailing yet. Yeah, no, definitely at some point those wagons were just bumping over there. But if you watched the last episode, this is pretty much where we stopped, and everything that comes now is brand new. I did use mostly just the uh, left alt, so everything is pretty straight. We shouldn't be wiggling too much. Yeah, I like how that looks. And everything is still connected. That is important. Very important, actually. So I, I am happy. I'm happy with what I'm seeing. This bridge over here, I'm pretty happy with. It took me way longer than I, than it should have taken me. But once you once you get once you figure out what you're doing, once you figure out the little ins and outs, do's and don'ts, actually pretty nice. And this this bridge, I, I, I'm very very happy with. Look at that. Yep, feels feels appropriate. And then the ground build up just around it, is nice. And I think we are at zero degrees. We may be starting to see some one degree incline here pretty soon. But overall, we're just 
zero degreeing it up. And that is perfect. So Bets, not Betsy, why do I call her Betsy? Uh, really quick, let's get some more wood in there. Just just a couple pieces, three pieces here. Uh, because I do feel that I don't want to run out of this <laughs> once the time comes. Yeah, a couple trees are a little close. I will fix them. This will be a turn off to the smelter. So once once we get that done, I will definitely come down from the iron ore mine to the smelter to get everything done. But here we are for now. Just making sure that all the wagons are still where they belong. This is a large trestle. I'm not sure that I love the trestle, but it's functional. It gets me around this little hump um, onto onto the connection that I need to get everything else going. Is this realistic? Nah, I'm gonna go with no. Uh, th this may be. It's not too tall for where we are. We are in the mountain. I was trying really, really hard to keep everything at zero degrees because I wanted um, the Eureka to have a chance. The first time I played this, I built a humongous bridge over to that side of the mountain and it was still a really high, um, high gradient. So I'm, I'm actually really happy with how this turned out. This bridge, again, I'm, I'm happy with. I think that's... That's appropriate, it's just where it is, is is the problem. The next bridge is a little more outlandish, but that's okay too. There's definitely, enough, definitely, definitely enough lumber to make all of this reasonable and working. Now this, there's a, tight, there's a slight incline, you can see it a little bit, it's, it's going up. And this is the last piece of rail that I have to get a little bit of momentum to go up the... Um, up the helix, and as you can hear... <laughs> Eight cars may not do it. Eight cars may not do it. I thought this was just 1%. It may be a little more than that. I have heard that there's some mods now that help you um, gauge the the percentages a little more. But holy moly. Looks like, looks like Doris is having some minor issues. Let's see. Can we get around this turn? I do know that the Helix is 1.75. I do know that this piece right here that we are currently driving on is three and more. So I'm not surprised that we're slowing down here. It also looks like we will barely make it underneath here. So honestly, I may not be able to put the missing pieces of bridge in the bridge because we are we are just barely sliding by. Maybe I can figure out something else that we can do there. Maybe I'll just leave it the way it is. Because the whole point of it is that this guy can go through there. I think we had just enough momentum to make it up that um, that little 3% gauge. But now we're, we're crawling a little bit. But we're picking up speed. We are past the 3% mark with our last wagon. So Doris is, is picking up speed. This is working. This is doing exactly what I needed it to do. Can this bridge hold this train, train load of stuff on it? That I don't know. But we're definitely picking up speed. So 1.75% at a 20 degree curve. It's totally working. Totally working. Doris is doing her thing, and I love it. I love it. Love it when a plan comes together, because that's exactly what we need. Uh, obviously, we have not I have not completed anything over there. We still have to get up to the iron ore mine, and I do hope that 1.75% will get us there. I have no way of knowing if that is the case. We did climb a lot in this little piece. And I really, really like the look of this helix. Really like it. Um, but it doesn't mean we're already there. This will definitely fall apart <laughs> if if this wasn't a video game. Um, so let's not argue about that. But yeah, I'd probably just leave it the way it is. It is the way it is because it's a video game. So we'll just we'll just deal with that. But no, I'm happy. I, I do know that... I, I mean, you just saw. Doris was not making it up that little ramp that was there. The only 3% that we had sitting there. So um, the 2% ramp that I had there before, Doris was not making up 8 cars. And now we have eight cars going up that mountain. Doris is the first non-porter locomotive that you can buy for a reasonable price. It may actually be the cheapest locomotive you can buy. It's $2,900. And I have her. And she's picking up speed. So this is perfect. I think this is where I'm going to stop. I don't honestly know if she can actually uh, um, build up speed from here. Because we are at an incline and it's a lot of weight. But as long as we can park here, I'm pretty happy. And um, I will just, yeah, um, the tender has a little break on there, and I'm, I'm going to use that. I will just stand here, clean up a little bit, get us connected up to the iron ore mine, and hopefully see you again next time. Thank you so much for watching. I hope to see you again soon. Bye for now.